Now we're going to look at conditional programming constructs. One of the things that makes the process so powerful is because when you program a computer, what are the constructs you're using a lot? If, then, case, loops. The way that VHDL works, none of those constructs are supported outside of a process. So you can't have concurrent signal assignments with if then statements and all that sort of stuff, but they are supported within a process. That, for that reason, that's why you almost exclusively use a process to model everything. Now you say, I thought you use processes to model sequential logic. The answer is yes, but you can also use them to model combinational logic. Because think about this, if I have a combinational logic circuit and I'm going to model it with a process, all I need is the output to be updated any time any of the inputs change. So what do I do in the sensitivity list to get that behavior? I just list all the inputs in the sensitivity list and boom, I got a combinational logic circuit. Okay, so let's take a look at the first programming construct that we have, which is an if statement. And the easiest way to do this is just to type it on out. So let's do the following. Let's fire up a model sim simulation, and let's take a look at an example of a circuit. So I'm going to come into my project folder, and I'm going to make a new folder for this example, and we'll call this if then. And let's use our test bench uh, that we've been using, the System X test bench. So I'll copy and paste it into here. And so now this System X test bench, if you recall, it's just got three inputs and they're walking through all, all eight possible codes. And so now I'm ready to fire up Model Sim. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say File, New, Project. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to browse to this new folder that I created, which is this guy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to name it Project. And then it'll ask me, do you want to add a file? And I'll say, yes, I do. I want to add my test bench. And then do you want to create a new file? And I'm going to say, yes, I do. I want to create one called System X. And I know that name because I know what's in the test bench. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to take a look at the test bench and make sure that I was right. So the test bench comes along, and it's got a component it's declaring called System X. It's got A, B, C as the inputs, and the output is F. So I, I named my file correctly. I need to make a system that has this exact same port definition. You're going to get in the habit of copying and pasting. So since I don't want to mess up the inputs, I'm just going to copy this. Because when I come over and start my system X, I'm going to start off by saying entity. And then I go system X, port definition, ABCs are in. F is an out, end, entity, and I've got it. Now I'm going to start up my architecture. And I'm going to call it system X underscore arc. That's just something I made up of system X is. I link that over to my system X. I do a begin. And then I do an end architecture. Architecture. And now I've got everything I need to compile. I save this up. I warm up the compiler. I say compile all. Oh my goodness. Compile all. I have an error. Does anybody see what it is? Well, let's double click on it is. It's missing is. Oh, when I t copied this over, I f didn't put is in there. All right, thank you, compiler. So I compile, selected, got it. So everybody is successful, just to make sure that I have both green on there. Compile all. Good. Now, here is the way this works. Let's create a circuit that is just a simple truth table. Okay, so let's see if I can get this up on the screen. I want to do a truth table, and we can just make it up as we go here. Let's do this. So here's our system. We're going to have A, B, and C, and F. And we're going to do 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, boom. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. And the outputs are going to be what? What do you want to do? Just yell at zeros and ones. 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. You like it? I like it. Now. <laughs> There's what we're going to model. <laughs> we come over to here, and I want to do this now with a process and an if-then statement. The first thing we need to think about is if I do a process, I need it to trigger on any transition of the inputs. So I'm going to do process, and then I do colon, 
and I'm going to list A, comma B, comma C. That's the way that you list the signals. Comma delimited in the sensitivity list. This will trigger any time there's a change on those. If I wanted to, you also have the ability to name a process. Naming your process can be useful once you start having a lot of processes because when you simulate them, you'll be able to determine which process is driving one. So I'll just do like CMB1 and all I did there was I named it, okay? Optional, you do not have to name it, but you could if you want to. Now, I come into here, I'm gonna do a begin, I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna do an end process and now I'm gonna model logic using an if-then statement. Okay, the keyword is if. Uh, well, obviously, if, then you list a Boolean condition. If this Boolean condition is true, you will do the following signal assignments. Okay, so what we wanna do in this situation is, I wanna list, in a situation where the inputs are zero, 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 I wanna assign the output a zero. Then you have another situation where you say, if the inputs are 0, 0, 1, I want to assign it a 0. So you immediately get in the situation where I really need multiple Boolean conditions. You almost always need multiple Boolean conditions. That's where you then bring in the else clause. Okay? So you bring in an else, but it's like, it's, it's otherwise I need to look at if this condition is there. So then you immediately move from an else to an else if. And the syntax is spelled like this for an else if. It is actually E-L-S-I-F, okay? So let's just do this really quick with copy and paste and I'll do it very verbosely. You know that you could make this much, much easier. So I'm gonna say if A is equal to a zero and B is equal to a zero and C is equal to a zero, then do the following. You have to then do a keyword then, and then you put the signal assignment, okay? In this situation, I'm gonna assign, F gets assigned a zero to represent that row, okay? Now you're looking at that and you're like, holy moly, why don't we just do all the ones and then do an else for the zero? That's true, but I'm not gonna, because I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this just to show you how big this thing can get. So I'm gonna say, okay, bada bing, I do this. In this situation, it's also a zero, but now look at this. I'm gonna do the whole line as a copy and paste. I'm gonna go boom, update it. And I'll update the outputs all at the end. And then I'm gonna go boom, update it. So this one is one and one. And then I'm gonna do boom on all of them, grab all four, because I got those input codes corrected. And then I'll do Make this a one, 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 one. Change this to an else. Now, do those input codes look correct? My C is zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. My B is zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one. Zero, 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 one, 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 one. Now, all I gotta do is slap in the outputs that I want, and I do a one on row two, I do a one on row four, and I do a row on one seven, but then I have to end this. How do you end an if statement in VHDL? You type end space if. At this moment, I'm done with my process, so I just do end process. This should work. Let's compile it really quick and let's make sure that we didn't do anything wrong. So I've saved it up. I'm gonna go boom, compile, selected. Two errors. Does anybody see what they are? Absolutely, semicolon after there. I'll take that one. Not even gonna check it. I'll just assume you're right. One error, anybody see it? <laughs> oh, semicolons for everyone. Now, you could have brought that, atten that to my attention a little uh, earlier, but you know, I'm not telling you how to live your life, okay? So we do this, we gotta warm up the down key. When I hit down, it jumps over there. So I go boom, boom. That feels a lot better, so I go boom. I go compile selected. One error. All right, I'll open it. Syntax error, line 10, near that. Everybody needs a semicolon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Extra colon. 
like I said, you just put the name, then you do colon, and you don't have a colon here. There's no reason at all to have that colon. Okay, compile, selected. Oh my goodness, nine errors. <laughs> what happened? None of them need semicolons. <laughs> Why'd you tell me to put a semicolon in there? <laughs> yeah, because they're not, they're not signal assignments. See, you guys tricked me. That's all right. That's all right. I see how it's going to be. Let's do this. OK, let's see if this will work. <laughs> all right, we got it. <laughs> let's see if this worked, though. We got to go simulate it. Boom. I'm going to load the test bench. Here comes my waveform. I come over here and I say add to wave signals in region, which gives me the top. That made my wave right there. It pops up. Add to wave signals in region. There it is. I'm going to come up here. I, this test bench had us going about what? 800 nanoseconds. So I go run. OK, here we go. We have to look at our waveforms. I zoom full. Remember, what I want to immediately do is combine these into a vector for viewing and go ahead and nuke these. And now I look at this relative to my original truth table. 0, 1, 0 is a, is a 1, 1, 0, 0 is a 1, and 1, 1, 1 is a 1. We did it. We just now did an if-then statement. Piece of cake, right? Let me show you just one more. You can all see it where you don't need to list all of these out. What you could do is use an else clause to cover all the situations you didn't explicitly list out. Okay? So let's do if else ifs to say assign it a 1 under these specific input conditions, else assign it a 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to nuke anybody that is, has an output of a 0. So I got that's out of here, boom, that's out of here, boom, these guys are out of here. So now what I have is I just have three statements that list out explicitly the inputs. Okay, And of course, i got to make sure. Then what I do is I have this final covering clause called else. And in any other input codes, I'll just assign f equal to a 0. Okay, Now I'll come over to here, and this should compile. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to compile it. So I come back over to my library. And I'm going to say project, compile, selected. It was successful. But I could be lying to you. So what I want to do is I'm going to change one of the codes. Let's change it to that guy, just so that the waveform at least changes. So now it's going to be 0, 1, 1 is my next code. So it's going to be 0, yeah, it's this dude right here. So I go save, and then I'm going to compile it. Compile, selected. I have my simulation running. I don't have to close my viewer. I just restart the simulation. So I click this button right here, restart. Boom, it's gone. I hit run, boom. I come back, and now I did it. So it's 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. That's it. Okay. So that is how you use an if-then statement. And that really is all there is to it. But the key is about it. You can't use an if, else, if, else unless it's in a process. That's the big magic to it. OK, and that is it for if else.